Hi, this is Hunter the Honda Mackinen. Now, a little while on this channel, I made a video where I went through all the Robot Masters from the 11 classic series Mega Man games and did thematic and stylistic analyses of all of them. And after that video came out, Kenny Blakey, aka Aqualung of Aqualung Game Reviews, actually requested that I should do something similar with the Mavericks from the Mega Man X series. Now, I have already done an earlier video where I went through what I think were the funniest Japanese names for the Mavericks, and honestly, I didn't really want to do the exact same thing for the Mavericks once again, but then I remember that the Mavericks, of course, are all representing natural things, at least for the most part, so I thought that I could just go through the entire list of Mavericks, and because I'm a biology teacher, I decided that I could maybe just go through some of the things that the Mavericks are based off of and give little tidbits about the various organisms that they represent. But I then realized like how much work that would be. So instead what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be just picking the three to four most interesting Mavericks from each of the Mega Man X games and giving some tidbits about that. And if people like this video enough, then maybe I'll go back and cover all the Mavericks that I didn't have time to go through. But yeah, without further ado, let's do some Maverick organism trivia bits, or whatever the hell I end up calling this video. Now, starting from Mega Man X1, I obviously had to address Boomer Kuwanger because I have, for the longest time, been completely baffled by what the hell kind of animal is a Kuwanger supposed to be. Now, I did find an answer, but I still am not entirely sure where the name comes from. Now, I always knew that Boomer Kuwanger was supposed to be some kind of insect, and the sources that I came up with all seem to be in firm agreement that Boomer Kuwanger is supposed to be a stag beetle. However, stag beetle in Japanese is called Kawaga Tamsuhi, which of course does not sound at all like Kuwanger, so I have to assume that the name is possibly some kind of a romanization blooper. Now what I did discover, and this was very interesting, that is that in Japan, apparently keeping stag beetles as pets is a thing. I mean, I suppose people who keep insects in jars just for the hell of it are kind of doing the same thing. But the, but the reason the Japanese have such an affection for the stag beetle specifically is because their horns sort of resemble the ornaments of a samurai helmet, and apparently the Japanese name for the stag beetle somehow reflects this as well. Which conveniently also explains the origins of another robot master from X3, specifically Gravity Beetle, who is also a stag beetle. And I think in the mangas, he is actually the brother of Boomer Kuwanger. Flame Mammoth, of course, is based on an extinct animal, specifically the mammoth, in case you didn't know. This was a hairy offshoot of the elephant family that went extinct during the last Great Ice Age. I need to make that distinction because there was actually a small ice age. The exact reason for the mammoth's extinction are not fully known, but it has been heavily speculated that early man might have played the largest role in just hunting it down. The closest living relative of the mammoth that still exists is the Asian elephant, and there have in fact been initiatives to try to resurrect the mammoth by extracting DNA from subfossils preserved in permafrost and possibly impregnating an elephant with it. I have my doubts about whether this project would actually work, but it would be kind of cool if it did. And finally, I have to talk about Spark Mandrill, because I realized while researching this video that I had made a mistake in that Funny Maverick Names video, where for some reason I had come to the conclusion that Mandrill was the name of a group of animals and not one specific animal. Don't be surprised, this is going to be a recurring theme in the Maverick names going forward. But no, the Mandrill is an actual species. The Mandrillus Sphinx, which lives in West Africa, is an old world monkey. And as you can probably see, it is obviously very closely related to the baboon. Jumping into X2, I really wanted to say something interesting about bubble crab, but the one thing that I immediately found out just researching this video was the fact that crabs are a bit complicated. And so I kind of came to the conclusion that bubble crab is not supposed to represent any specific species of crab. I think he's not a snow crab, for instance, because he has such short legs. But yeah, crabs are an extremely big infra-order of different animal species, specifically a type of crustacean, which all developed already during the Jurassic period. Now, Morph Moth is obviously a moth, and what I always thought was kind of cool about him is that you get to find him pre-metamorphosis, when he's basically in his cocoon state. Moths, as you probably know, are closely related to butterflies. In fact, they are in the same order, Lepidoptera. 
And in Western cultures, moths obviously have a bit of a mixed reputation. Generally, people seem to very much dislike them because they are sort of generalist herbivores that, that eats anything that doesn't try to run away, including clothes. Which is why in large numbers, moths are sometimes classified as pests. But they are also pollinators, and as people might know, the number of pollinating insects has been going down in disconcertingly high numbers in recent years. So this is why if you happen to see a moth, you might not necessarily just want to kill it. I don't know, I always thought moths were kind of cute. Now, Wilgator is obviously an alligator. They do fall under the order of Crocodilia, but they are an extremely rare group. And in fact, only two extant species of alligators are around, the Chinese and the American alligators. The only other close relative is a kind of an offshoot, which is called the caiman. And of course, I did have to acknowledge wire sponge. Sponges, in case you didn't know, are in fact animals. They are the least developed group of animals, the periphera. And despite what I said in the cartoon that me and Aqualung did, they, they are not actually filter feeders. They literally just let water pass through them and grab food that way. I also have to give a little bit of criticism to the Capcom designers because Wire Sponge has these weird blooms in the top of his orifice, whatever the hell it's supposed to be. I, I know it's probably supposed to be just a, some kind of lightning rod, but yeah, just in case you were under the false impression, sponges are not plants. Now, in X3, I've already covered Gravity Beetle, but there were actually two animals that I realized were a little bit more mysterious than I originally suspected. And these are Blizzard Buffalo and Crush Crawfish. I assumed I knew what a buffalo was until I started looking it up, and then I realized that I could not be entirely sure which animal Blizzard Buffalo is actually supposed to be. There is a group of animals, a subtribe called true buffaloes, which are called bubalina, which includes stuff like water buffaloes and such from the old world. But the American buffalo, of course, is known as a bison. And trying to discern from Blizzard Buffalo's design which of these two groups he's supposed to represent is honestly impossible, so I kind of came up into a bit of a crapper on that one. But it's Crush Crawfish that actually caused me even more problems. Now, something I need to point out here is that Crush Crawfish is not what this maverick is called in Japan. His original Japanese name is Scissors Shrimper. And unfortunately, I fell into a bit of a crab rabbit hole trying to decipher what the heck the difference between a crawfish and a shrimp is. And although I don't think I have a fully accurate answer, I, what I eventually kind of found out is that shrimps, aka prawns, are the smallest kinds of crustaceans with transparent shells and no claws while crawfish is a more general name that can be used for freshwater lobsters. Now what I find particularly frustrating about this is the fact that shrimps as a rule don't have claws, while crushed crawfish obviously has very big ones, which most lobsters also have. So Capcom's American division may have just come up with the name Crush Crawfish, but I have to actually concede that it's actually a more accurate name than Scissor Shrimper. Mega Man X4 features our very first example of a mythical animal in the X series, and that one being obviously Magma Dragoon, who is supposed to be a dragon. Dragons are a very common mythical creature in a lot of cultures around the world. But what I find interesting about Magma Dragoon is the fact that he is very obviously supposed to be a Western-style dragon and not the Asian type. Asian-type dragons typically don't have wings and are usually more snake-like in appearance, such as Shenron from Dragon Ball Z. While Magma Dragoon clearly has tiny wings on his back and clearly has a general more Western dragon outline. Now, I kind of herp the derp on this next one, but I honestly had to look up what which animal slash beast was supposed to be. And let me just say that beast is a very generic name to give to any character. But yeah, he's just supposed to be a lion. Split Mushroom, interestingly, is the only maverick in the entire series that represents the kingdom of fungi. Unfortunately, the X4 designs on the animals aren't very clear, so trying to narrow split mushroom down to a specific species of mushroom was pretty impossible. I was tempted to say that he's supposed to be a shiitake, because shiitake mushrooms are obviously very popular in Japan, and they are the inspiration for the Goombas in Mario. But I think split mushroom is intended to be just a generic mushroom. Web spider is obviously a type of spider that formed the order Aranea, which is the largest order of arachnids, which includes all eight-legged anthropods, including spiders, daddy long legs, so on and so forth. 
All right, and now we come to X5. So first, burn Dino Rex, which is obviously supposed to be a Tyrannosaurus Rex, who some anthropologists are still debating over whether it was actually a predator or just a scavenger of some kind. The most interesting tidbit that I really have to say about the T-Rex is the fact that, despite the fact that how prominently it gets featured in the logo of the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World movies, the T-Rex actually lived during the Cretaceous era, so yeah. Grizzly Slash, aka Crescent's Grizzly, is supposed to be the North American brown bear, or grizzly bear, Ursus arctos horribilis. And which is giving us a bit of an insight that Ursus maritinus, the polar bear, might in fact itself just be a subspecies of the brown bear, because we know for a fact that brown bears and polar bears can have babies together. Spike Rose Red, aka Axel the Red, is the first plant-based maverick. Specifically, of course, he represents roses, which is the plant group Rosé. Spiral Pegasus is our, is our second maverick based on a mythological animal rather than a real one. Pegasus is the winged horse from Greek mythology, which is written by several heroes and gods in the Pantheon, but he's most famous for being the steed of Perseus, the hero who defeated Medusa. Now, Tidal Whale, aka Duff McWhalen, was a bit of a mystery to me because I'm not entirely sure if the Capcom designers themselves were fully sure which specific whale he was supposed to be. Because of his lumpy head shape, I was actually first convinced that he was supposed to be a sperm whale, but then when you look at his jaw and the fact that he has a fin, it becomes kind of obvious that he's supposed to be a blue whale. Now, what makes this annoying is the fact that it kind of looks like he has teeth, but I'm willing to bet that maybe that's just supposed to be the filter from a blue whale's mouth. So, bit of a mishmash design, but, but what the hell, Duff McWhalen is still one of my favorite Mavericks. Volt Kraken, aka Squid Adler, is obviously supposed to be a squid. Which... Now, what I find interesting about this is that while I actually think Volt Kraken is actually a cooler sounding name than Squid Adler, it's actually maybe not as accurate because the Kraken, which is a mythological creature, is typically depicted as looking more like an octopus than a squid. So yeah, I think Squid Adler is a bit more accurate. From X6, we get yet another mythologically inspired maverick, that one being Blaze Hedonix, which is based on the phoenix, a bird creature from Greek mythology, which continually dies and is resurrected. Now, X6 has a couple of weird maverick names that I think b suffer from the fact that X6 wasn't really even properly localized. They just put a bunch of English texts in there and called it a day because some of the Maverick names are clearly not translated, including Ground Scarabitch. Now, Ground Scarabitch is very obviously supposed to be a dung beetle, and I believe the second part of his name is supposed to refer to scarab beetles, which, which are a form of dung beetle. Dung beetles, by the way, feed on dung, which is why they roll it up in balls. Infinity Maginian is one of those mavericks that honestly I have no idea about. Apparently he's supposed to be a water flea, which are those very, very tiny water anthropods that are almost completely translucent. I mean, it makes sense. He does kind of have a bit of a dopey appearance. From X7, we have Snipe Anteater. Now, anteaters form a group called Vermilingua, and there are only four actual species of anteaters, the most famous one being the giant anteater. And in fact, anteater is one of those names that is often claimed for a bunch of other animals that are, that are, that are not actually related to them at all, such as aardvarks, numbats, echidnas, and pangolins. Now, Splash Warfly is another one that I had to look up because honestly, I had no idea what the hell he was supposed to be. And apparently, he's supposed to be a flying fish, which is something I totally did not get from his appearance. Flying fish belong into the group Exosotica, and the reason flying fish has fly is actually to get away from underwater predators. Tornado Tanyan is our second to last plant-based maverick. Specifically, of course, he is supposed to be an onion, or Allium sepa. And if you're wondering which specific onion, it doesn't matter. All onions are literally the same plant, they're just different variants of it. And finally, X8, and again, I have quite a few examples to pull from here. Now our final mythological creature used as the basis of a maverick is, is Avalanche Yeti. Yeti, or the Abominable Snowman, is one of the many variants of the mysterious traveling ape man myth called in North America a Bigfoot. Stories about large hairy ape men roaming the wilderness are actually shockingly common across the globe, and with the Yeti and Bigfoot not even being the only examples. The Yeti is the most famous one, however, because there have been so many consolidated efforts to try to find him in the Himalayas. 
The man who eventually became the first person to scale the top of Mount Everest actually himself attempted to discover the Yeti and came to the conclusion that the reported Yeti footprints were most likely just human footprints that had become enlarged when the snow around them started to melt. Bamboo pandemonium, of course, is based on the giant panda, Iluropoda melanoleuca, which I always found was a very interesting choice of mavericks because pandas are pretty much the most pathetic species of bear. They are pretty much the world's only primarily herbivore bear, and if you know anything about pandas, aside the fact that they are adorable, they are also not exactly the best bear that a bear can be because they eat so much bamboo, which itself is not extremely rich in nutrients, which is why they had to eat so much more of it, and which, and which is why pandas are kind of like the drugged out hippie bears. Unfortunately, this also means that they are highly endangered because they are so dependent on that one food source. The burnt rooster is obviously supposed to be a, well, rooster or a male chicken. The Latin name for the chicken is Gallus Gallus domesticus, and, and while there are various different types of poultry birds that have been domesticated, the common rooster is in fact a domesticated red jungle fowl, which I have always found to be extremely interesting. Now, Gigabolt Manowar, I think, is another very interesting animal because, despite what you might have thought, it is not a jellyfish. It is based on the Portuguese Manowar, which is actually more of a colony of different organisms. Now, they are a nidoria, that is to say, a stinging animal in the same general group as jellyfish, but they are, in fact, in no way, shape, or form related. And finally, Optic Sunflower, our last plant-based maverick, is obviously named for the sunflower, the genus Helianthus, to, to be more specific. Apart from being rather large, sunflowers are also best known for their extreme heliotropism, which is to say that they follow the movement of the sun across the sky in order to absorb as much sunlight as possible. Now, the vast majority of plants are actually heliotropic to some degree, it's just that the sunflower is so large that it's much more easier to observe in nature. And if you're wondering exactly how the sunflower is able to follow along, it's actually thanks to the plant hormone auxin, which literally just builds up on the shady side of plants, specifically for the purpose of making sure that they are mostly exposed to the sun. So there you go, I hope you found those Maverick tidbits interesting. I'm Hanno the Hunter Mackinen. see you on the next one.